What's up guys, MC Stu here, and today we're gonna talk about starter packs, starter ships, and Star Citizen, and which ones, uh, in my opinion, you should consider and maybe not consider uh, if you're a new player and just starting out. Um, these are just my opinions, and as always, things can change as the game is updated and is being continually developed. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Star Citizen is an open alpha state uh, I recommend to people buy the game as it is now. Um, if you're not happy with the way that it is now from what you've seen, then wait until it is finished and comes out. Uh, it's important that, you know, if you do buy into it, that you are not buying the dream, okay? Because the dream changes and the dream can take a long time. Um, so when I bought into the game, I bought the game because, uh, you know, watching different people playing it, it looked really cool right now. I went ahead and paid uh, for a starter pack, got into it, and have loved it ever since. I am excited about what it could be and hopefully will be, hopefully sometime soon. Um, but nevertheless, that's not what I bought. I did not buy the dream. I bought the game as it is now, and I've been happy with that purchase. So just know that it is out open alpha. Um... And that's something you just need to uh, make sure that uh, you keep in mind. Um, also, before we get into which dipper, different ships to buy, I just want to talk real quick about the upgrade and trade-in system. Because um, that's kind of important when you're looking at making one of these decisions. The nice thing about the way that, that Star Citizen does this is that anything that you buy here out of the store, you can trade in for straight one-to-one -one store credit or you can upgrade for the difference in the the values so for instance if you purchase the aurora starter pack and um, you know a month later you're like man i, I wish i would have got the 100i instead um, you could either trade this whole pack back in for 40 dollars store credit and just use that towards the 52 dollars putting in another 12 dollars or you could just upgrade the ship itself to the next ship in that instance, they're gonna take whatever the regular cost is of the ship by itself, and you could then apply that to the regular cost of whatever the other ship is. And it can be any ship. So you can always upgrade or trade in if you found that, man, I, I really don't like what I picked. That's okay, you're not locked into it. You can go ahead and trade that in or upgrade it to one of the other ships in the game. Um, that's a really nice feature. I like that, especially as ships come out and I wanna try stuff, I'll trade in a couple of my ships and go ahead and pick up the new ship on credit and won't even need to put in money sometimes um, so it's a real nice feature that it has all right so if you're watching this video um, you're probably looking at the starter packs and wondering okay which which starter pack is going to make the most sense for me um, as always with most of my videos they're going to come from the standpoint of utility and also bang for buck uh, so I'm not a millionaire, things are expensive everywhere, and I like to try and just get the most I can for my money, and if there's things that I can earn or earn in-game or whatever it may be, um, you know, I, I try and go that way. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is come to robertspaceindustries.com. You've probably already found your way there. If you haven't created an account, you'll just click on account at the top here, and then click on enlist now. Uh, you'll fill out your information make sure that you use a referral code so right here um, there it, it's kind of hidden <laughs> there's not just a field for it. you actually have to click the button and then it opens it i have a referral code down in the description of this um, this will give you some extra uh, money in game when you start or if there's ever wipes um, so you'll just go ahead and get that filled out you can create an account for free um, once you have the account um, then you can buy a starter pack or if it's a free fly week or something like that you would be able to go ahead and play the game with uh, without even paying during the free fly week so make yourself an account use the referral code uh, let's take a look at the starter pack so if we go to the pledge store so i have chosen uh, three of the uh, the ships out of all the different starter packs that they have um, and the criteria that i had is i wanted it to be number one as cheap as possible and have some some basic uh, amenities, I guess um, you, you could say. There are some other kind of you know good ships, and we'll honorable mention those at the end. Um, but they were missing some of what I personally would recommend. You know, you require when you're picking one of these up. Um, and so what that is is I want to be able to do pretty much all of the roles that you would be able to do when you're starting off. So a little bit of cargo running, which isn't going to be a lot in any of these smaller starter ships. Um, easily be able to do box uh, delivery missions so being able to get into your ship with a container 
place it somewhere inside on the floor. Um, combat is, is going to be a little bit tougher in a ship like this, but against the AI, um, it, it's really not too bad. And you could do it in pretty much all of these ships that I'm going to go over. Um, although some will do a little better than others. And that's some of the differences that we'll get into with my top three picks. Uh, the other thing for me is that I want a bed in my ship. A bed is used for being able to log out uh, of the game wherever you are. And when you log back in, you'll log back into your ship in that same spot. Otherwise, if you were you know, piloting your ship and you just logged out, you didn't get in the bed or you're running around on ground, whatever it may be, you're not in a bed and you log out, you're going to respond back at whatever port you you know were, were last at and had checked into before you left. Um, so every now and then, you know, my kids will come yelling and I, I need to step away from the game for a minute. And so I'll just log out in, in my bed, go take care of what I have to, and then come back, log back in, and I'm right back where I left off. So that's, it's a real nice feature to be able to, to do that in your ship. Um, it saves, you know, some travel time and having to kind of restart from, you know, whatever port you're at last or station or city or whatever. Um, so those are really kind of the main things that I'm looking for when I'm looking at a starter ship. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first one, and that is going to be the Aurora MR. This is uh, the cheapest one that you can get. They are currently on sale, so these are the sale prices. You can see the regular prices here. Um, you'll see some of these say War Bond on them, and some do not, like this one here. What that means is War Bond, you have to buy it with cash, so you wouldn't be able to use store credit. On a starter pack, that's not a huge deal, but just know that so you know if you bought this one on sale and the sales over you'd have 40 store credit and if you then wanted to i don't know buy the same one again i don't know why you'd want to do that um store credit's going to be 45 dollars, which i guess is actually the same price so these are war bond because these are on sale so these can only be purchased with real money not with store credit so anytime you see that when you're looking at ships or anything else in the game war bond means real money if it doesn't have the war bond that means that you can buy uh it with store credit there's generally nothing that's war bond only. Um, it's just if it's on sale or some sort of special promotion, it'll be war bond only. Um, all right, so the Aurora MR, uh, this is actually the ship that I started with uh, four years ago. Um, this ship has a, a bed in the back, um, which is nice. It has a small area right behind the, the actual cockpit and the pilot seat. Uh, very small, but it's big enough to put a couple boxes in and uh, be able to store them there while you fly from you know different locations to deliver them. Um, you could even have a friend or two standing in the back, but it is standing room only, so there's not a lot of room. This has four weapons in the front. I'm not going to go into all the different technical details on these ships because at this point, uh, you know, starting, that's it's really not going to make a big difference. So the different mounting sizes and those kinds of things. But it's got four weapons up front. This ship can do most of your um, most of your PvP bounty missions and different things like that. Most of them. It's not a dogfighter, but it can get the job done, especially if you're practicing at piloting and getting pretty decent. I've seen very good pilots in the game be able to do very well with this ship, even in PvP situations, but that speaks more to their skills, obviously, than, than the ship itself. Um, so it can do your delivery missions. It cannot run cargo so there is no uh storage and none of these ships all of the ships that are going to be on the list do have some of them do have some some cargo storage area but it's not a ton so you would make more doing box missions you know with, with some of these ships than you would running cargo because there's just not enough room in them um the aurora does not have any actual cargo grid space for for picking up materials and and goods and and moving them around so, um, but this is the cheapest one. It gets most of those bullet points done. It has a bed in it. And if you pick this up, maybe you're just unsure. Yeah, I want to check it out. It looks cool. And you find you really like it. You can just upgrade this to one of the other either starter ships or any other ship that you want to after the fact. So the Aurora is going to be um, first on the list um, because of the price point, And it hits pretty much all of the requirements that I want. Uh, which is being capable at most all the roles uh, in the different gameplay loops that are in the game has the bed in it and again it's very inexpensive so this pack is going to include your access as well so you'll if we look down i'm in the starter pack section here but if you looked in like the standalone ships you could buy this ship by itself and i believe it's like 75 dollars. but these packs include basically your access to the persistent universe um, that's why they say pack on it. So any of these are going to include your access and it's going to come with a ship. 
So that's number one. Uh, number two is a new addition to the game. This came out in um, the last patch during the Invictus uh, event, which was a month or so back. And this is the Cutter. Uh, this is a really cool ship. It, it really gives me the Mandalorian uh, vibes on this one. Um, I like the way it looks. It's a little different. It's very uh, utilitarian. Um, it's not super sleek or any of those kind of things, but depending on, on your preference of style, um, I, I personally like it. I like sleek ships too, but I, I just like the look of this ship um, when it came out. This is going to have a little bit less in the way of firepower. It only has two weapons in the front. Um, so you could do some of the the PVE, um, you know, NPC fighting, you know, space combat missions. Um, again, if you're, you know, practice, get good, you can you can make it work. Um, but this is not this is probably going to be the weaker one out of the, the three on the list um, that, you know, would be able to perform that kind of a function. Um, this does have a, uh, a little bit of cargo uh, space in it. And I believe this has four. Let's just take a look here on the page. So you have four. Um, slots, I forgot what they call these, uh, SCU, SCU is how they, uh, break down the, the size. Um, so you can put a little bit of cargo, uh, in this ship and be able to run that. It does have a bay in the back. You can fit some of the smaller vehicles in it. Um, it has a sectioned off quarters in between the back bay and the pilot area, which does have a bed. And, um, so th this one is going to be a step above the Aurora in the way of space that it has. The storage, you could easily fit four or five friends in this ship with a little uh, little bit more elbow room. Um, it does only have the one bed in it, but again, this is more of a solo ship. It can be operated, obviously, with just one person, and that's really what it's kind of designed to do. Uh, so this is a great ship for getting in. Starting off, you can run all the different mission loops in this because you can run the cargo. Um, again, the combat's going to be a little bit less um, in it, but it... It still can get it done. It's just not going to do as much of it. And again, if you're just starting brand new, um, that you probably want to familiarize yourself with the mechanics of flight and all the different things in the game before you start jumping into you know, PvP and different things like that. So in a ship like this, if I was running some box deliveries and I start getting engaged by another player or something like that, I'm probably just going to scoot on out of there and, uh, and get away. Um, but this is a great ship for just you know starting off soloing through the game. And, uh, you know, being able to put stuff in the back, have a little bit more room, the, uh, the immersion on this particular ship for me uh, feels feels a lot better. And again, I think it's a, a cool looking ship. It, it's like ugly in a beautiful way, if that makes any sense. You'll either love it or you'll hate it. Um, this one is normally $60 and is on sale for $51. So it's about 11 bucks more than, uh, than the Aurora. And again, like all the rest of them, these, these are upgradable. Lastly on the list is I think probably fan favorites. It's definitely my favorite. Um, this is going to be the ship that I upgraded my Aurora to um, about a month after starting to play. And that is going to be the Avenger Titan. I still use this ship quite a bit to this day. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. So there's a lot of ships that you'll there, there are, let's not say a lot. There are certain ships you're going to come across and play and check out where you'll find yourself kind of always going back to them. And it's not because like it's got the wow factor it's the coolest ship it's just that it's super super convenient um so let's talk about the basics on the avenger titan it holds eight scu so double that of the cutter so you can run a little bit more cargo in it it has a bay in the back which is larger so you can fit a couple other vehicles in it that you couldn't fit into the cutter um you're not going to fit any of the large ones into it but buggies some of the hover bikes and things like that you would be able to put into the back and and shuttle them around again you could fit you probably cram like 10 people into that. That would be shoulder to shoulder, but you could put you know a few of your friends in that, no problem. If you're just needing to get from A to B and shuttle some people around. Um, it has a bed in it as well. Uh, so you can log out anywhere and it has four weapons. I'm sorry, three weapons um, and they are all, all larger weapons. So you're gonna have size threes on the wings and a size four on the front. So this ship, does all the things that the previous ones do and marginally better and it's going to be very good at combat it's not the best combat ship ship out there but um you can do anything in the game i've seen people use this as their main for even pvp and things like that and do very very well this game is very skill based um so you know you could go up as a brand new player and you know whatever is the current top 
you know, dogfighter and play against somebody in an Aurora and they're going to beat you, right? So, I mean, it's very skill based. This ship can be used for any of the PVE or the PVP um, content in the game. It's a very, very capable fighter on top of having all the other amenities like the storage in the back, having a bay with the ramp, having a bed. And my favorite part and one of the, the reasons I come back to this all the time is that this ship you can enter and exit from the cockpit instead of having to get out of your chair go through the sleeping quarters put down the bay and then leave your ship and it sounds like okay well what's the big deal well if you're doing a lot of box deliveries or you're you're just moving around the universe doing different things it's so nice to just be able to climb out the side and you're out as opposed to having to move through the ship so it, it just saves some time and, and you'll find it it's it's a night and day convenience difference being able to do that this ship also handles and flies the best out of all of these three and uh, will allow you to be able to you know, get down to the surface quicker, land, maneuver, all those different kinds of things because it is a better dogfighter, so those characteristics are, uh, are there. Um, this ship's normally $70, so this is gonna be on the higher, obviously, of the range for the three that I've picked here. Um, and it's definitely my favorite, and I would argue it's probably fan favorite for starter ships and just, you know, ships in general. It's a great daily driver, um, unless, you know, if you're a cargo runner and that's your main thing, there's ships that can fit hundreds and hundreds uh, SEU size, you know, containers in them. Um, and that's what you would use for doing that kind of thing. But short of that, this is an excellent daily driver to get around do missions, dogfight, um, you know, any of the exploration, going into caves. Um, it's just a very good all-around multi-purpose ship. Um, and I would I would definitely recommend that if $70, and I'm going to say 70 because that's its regular price because I don't know when you're going to be watching this, but if that's in your budget uh, and you're pumped enough and want to, uh, want to play the game, that's definitely the one to go to. If you're kind of unsure or you don't, you know, go with the cheapest one. Go with the cheapest ship, the starter ship, $40 or $45 when it's not on sale and check it out. You know, if, if you don't, uh, you know, like it that much now or whatever, then, you know, wait till it gets better or, you know, you haven't lost as, as much money, you know, as what you would, you know, buying one of the larger ships or one of the more expensive ships to get in. And you can always upgrade that later. All right, so honorable mentions, um, the Pisces, I was kind of going back and forth of whether or not I wanted to put that in there. Um, this is a great all around ship, but it does not have a bed. And that's a big deal for me. Um, if I only had one ship and that's really the angle we're looking at this from to start with, having the bed is really, really nice. Uh, but this ship is fast. It handles very well. Uh, it does have a bay, but you can't really fit anything in it. Um, it has the same cargo capacity as the cutter. And, uh, and that's four SCU that it can fit. Uh, it's a good looking ship. It actually, it really reminds me of the shuttlecraft from um, the Star Trek show Enterprise that they had. Um, it's what, every time I see it, that's exactly what I think of. But it's a good looking ship. It has four forward facing weapons. I think they're the same size as the Aurora. So in terms of combat, you know, again, it can do okay in the right hands, but it's not really what it's geared for. That This ship was originally designed or is designed to be uh, docked in uh, a larger ship. Uh, a Carrick and uh, you pull up to orbit and instead of flying the Carrick down and landing it, which takes a lot longer because it's a big ship, you could just open the bay doors, fly this out of it, go do whatever you're doing on the planet and then come back up to your ship dock and take off and do whatever it is that you're doing continuing on. So this is a good ship as well. Um, and if you're looking at it and you're just like, I got to have it, it's not, you know, for me having a bed I like to have, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have it, but I needed to have some standards and kind of what I was picking here for the video. Otherwise, we'd kind of be reviewing all of them and uh, I'm just not gonna do that. So um, honorable mention to the Pisces. It is a great ship. It just doesn't have a bed and that's why it didn't make my list. If you're somebody that has all kinds of money to spend on video games, um, then I would recommend checking out the Cutlass Black. Uh, this ship is excellent, 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 excellent. And if I were going to upgrade my Titan instead of buying this separately or something like that, I would be going to this particular ship. Uh, this is a capable combat ship. Uh, again, it's not a dogfighter, but it's got a decent amount of firepower. Um, there is uh, a turret on the top. It has a bay door. You could fit a couple vehicles in it. Not any of the large ones, but a couple of the small ones. It has two beds in it. Um, it has a decent amount of firepower, uh, VTOL thrusters, so you can turn the back, you know, engines, pick it up, set it down. Um, and it carries quite a bit more cargo than any of the other starter ships that we looked at. 
Um, so if you were gonna, you know, quote unquote, whale out, that would uh, would be the way to go. Um, excellent, excellent ship. This is probably your next fan favorite. Um, you know, once you start talking the, um, you know, after hundred dollar range for uh, for ships. Uh, there are quite a few other starter ships here. Um, some of them, and I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail, but like a Hornet, for instance, this is a dedicated combat ship. So that's kind of the only thing you're going to be able to do with it. You can't log out in it. Um, I don't think it has much in the way of storage. Um, the Nomad's not bad. Um, I personally just don't like it that much. I have a hard time finding my way around it. It's kind of weird. Um, and it does have some storage, but it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a pickup truck. It's kind of exposed in the back. And then you get into the crazy stuff like, um, you know, the the exploration um, packages and, you know, $1,000 is crazy. You know, you can buy this ship in game. So get yourself a starter ship, play the game, earn money, rent ships, bigger ships in order to get even more money. Buy this ship in game. Don't spend $1,000. That's crazy. If you're spending $1,000 on this, you're, you're buying the dream, okay? Don't buy the dream. I'm not saying the dream's not going to come true, but <laughs> it hasn't yet. So that's just a, a, a ton of money. If you have the kind of money to just throw like that, then, you know, do it. But um, my recommendation is to uh, start with the cheapest thing. Or if you got a little bit extra, go with the Titan, because um, this you're going to use this forever. It's an excellent, excellent ship. But you know, start with the cheapest thing, check it out, and if you're just loving it, then go ahead and upgrade to something like the Titan, and um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna really enjoy that. Um, all right, well, I think that covers it for my top three picks. Pretty straightforward, um, but just wanted to give you my opinion on that and which ones I would look at. Because if you're brand new, you don't know a lot about any of this and you're looking through. I know for me, I started off looking at, man, this looks really cool, right? There's a lot of cool factor on some of these different ships and stuff. Um, I almost bought the uh, the Mustang. I'm glad I didn't because it doesn't have a bed and all those kinds of things. But uh, originally when I started playing, the Mustang and the Aurora were basically your two entry-level starter packages that you could get. Uh, luckily, I went with the Aurora and um, it, it was more of kind of on accident, but I was happy that I, I ended up doing that. So... All right, I think that covers it all. Lastly, don't forget guys, until uh, December 10th, um, there is a promotion going on uh, in Star Citizen. Uh, if you use a referral code, which I'll have down in the description, um, and uh, you buy any of these starter packages, so it has a threshold of $40, which is what the, the starter package is, you will get a, um, a smaller Argo ship uh, up on screen here now. Um, it's a utility ship. It doesn't have a quantum drive. It's kind of a taxi kind of a thing for, you know, using in close areas, um, but it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's free. I think it's normally 30 or 40 bucks. Um, those will be delivered to you on the 10th. Um, so if you sign up, use the code and I'll put up on the screen now how to sign up. So you want to click the account button in the top, fill out your info and then uh, click the uh, use code button, put in the referral code down in the description and uh, create your account. Once you create the account, then you'll come over and buy a starter package. Um, and then on the 10th of next month, you will get um, that, uh, that Argo ship uh, delivered to your hangar. So make sure you take advantage of that if uh, you're looking at signing up for the game. All right, guys, till next time, I appreciate you watching and uh, stay safe. Have a good one.